Hello. Hi, hi, hi. Welcome to Verbling. I'm Teacher Oakley. And in today's class, we're going to have a nice, simple, easy pronunciation class. We're going to be looking at the letter S. As they would say in Sesame Street, today's class is brought to you by the letter S. And all grammatical endings that feature the letter S. Okay, we've got some students joining up already. Ooh, cool picker pictures too. Okay. Uh, real quick, I want to say uh, greetings, Maro. Can you hear me? Yes, teacher. I can hear you. Very good. Uh, where are you from, Mara? I'm from Colombia, teacher. Colombia, okay. Colombia, yeah. Yeah, that's a cool picture you have in your, your Google picture. Okay. <laughs> we'll talk to you again soon. Um, Michael, how are you today? Yeah, I am fine. Okay. Where, where are you from, Michael? I am from Thailand. From Thailand, interesting. But uh, I'm, I'm an American, but I'm currently living in the Philippines. So we're practically neighbors. <laughs> okay, uh, guys, today, uh, thanks for jumping right in the class. We're going to be uh, talking about how we pronounce the letter S at the ending of words. We use S. Uh, for different reasons at the end of words. Can you think of a reason why we use S, Marl? What's one reason we may use S at the end of a word? Plural. Plural. Very good. Simple plurals, uh, such as plural nouns, okay? Well, noun. Nouns. I add an S and two, two nouns. Plurals. Yeah. Right. Very good. Uh, Michael, can you think of uh, another reason? Oh, we got a response from outside the class. <laughs> and Tikalon, interesting name. Okay. Um, belonging, or what we call, you are exactly right, what we call possessives. Like, uh, I'll use your example, John's pen. Okay, if I want to show that John owns the pen. It's called a possessive. Exactly right. Very good. Uh, are you in the room yet? Kick on, or are you still outside? Okay. Um, hang on, let me close that. Saba. Hi, I just want to see you. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you again, too. How are you today? Yeah, I am fine. And you? Uh, I'm good. Thank you for asking. Uh, <laughs> Hi, Marie. How are you? Yeah, today we're Hi. we're talking. Hi. Hi. Oh, I'm a little late, but uh, here anyway. Hi. Hi, Marie. How are you doing? How are you, Marie? I'm fine, thank you. I'm from France. From France. Oh, lovely. From Paris or somewhere else? No, uh, somewhere else. Strasbourg. Okay. Right. Very good. Send me some wine, will ya? Um, I love French wines, but okay, <laughs> wines with an S. All right. Today's class, we're talking about S pronunciation. We just mentioned a couple reasons why we use S at the end of a word. Very good. We've got plur plural nouns and also possessives. Also, Gloria who doesn't seem to be in the class, when we speak in the third person, um, subject verb agreement, like, I run, but Gloria runs, or she runs. Okay, so third person verb tense, um, like, she runs. Now the verb takes an S. Because the subject is she and the uh, verb is run, they have to match. I don't know why is my text box 
not working. Okay. So yet another reason. There is actually one more. Who can tell me one more reason, grammatic reason, grammatical reason why we may add an S. We have plurals, subject verb agreement in third person sentences. Uh, possessives, there's one more actually. Anybody? Who's my English genius today? Ah, how about this one? What about if, how about if I want to, I want to make a contraction. She's running. She runs. She's running. Now she's, uh, as a contraction for she is, also takes an S. So there's four reasons that we actually use S at the end of different words, different kinds of words. Um, pronouns, nouns, verbs, uh, proper nouns like names. So there's many reasons. Now, okay, that's the most complicated part of this entire lesson. After this, it gets easy. I like teaching this lesson for this simple reason. You, you all are learning English second language, I presume. So you know that English language has many, many, far too many exceptions, special rules, strange British rules and American rules that can be mind-boggling. However, in today's class, we're going to learn pronunciation for S at the ends of words, wherein the rules are always, thankfully, always the same. They don't change regardless of the purpose for a possessive, third person, a plural noun, pronunciation rules are always going to stay the same. Okay. Before we jump into the rules, I just want to make sure that uh, if anyone has another window open with verbling, with this video going on, it's going to cause echo. Or if you have any other YouTube video on, please either close the window or pause the video. And then um, the class will not be able to hear the feedback and or echo, echo, echo. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay, so a bunch of other people have joined the class. I've intro the class. We're going to start looking at the rules, but let me just quickly say hi to a couple new arrivees. Uh, Adelson, how are you? Hi, Adelson. Is your mic working? Also, I'm kind of checking if your microphone, if you have microphones. Are you there, Adelson? Can you speak? Okay, we'll we'll try you again later, maybe. Emra, are you there? Emra, can you hear me? Yes, I, I can hear you. Okay, very good. Okay, very good. And where are you from, where Emra? From, Emra? I am from Turkey. Can you hear me? Oh, really? Oh, Turkey. Really? Okay. I, I live in, uh, in Kaiseri. Oh, very interesting. interesting. You've got a little bit of echo going on. So if you have a headset and microphones, Emra, please, please use them. If you can, all right, please. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I I don't have uh, microphone. Okay. What you what you can do, Emra, is when I ask you to speak. Um, turn on your microphone. You have a little microphone sign with a cross through it. Just shut it off while I'm talking or others are talking. Then we don't hear the echo. Okay? And then when I call on you, you can turn it on again to speak. Okay, thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. Hi, Eric. Eric? I see your yeah. I see your lips moving, but no sound. 
Okay, no microphone? Wow, tough luck, buddy. Okay, that's kind of what I'm checking out. Uh, okay, uh, I want to say hi to Gilong. Gilong, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Gilong, is that your picture? You look very, very young. Yes, I am. <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm 23 years old. Really? Uh, you're very short for 23, then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about your Google picture, Galong. I'm just joking with you, okay? Sorry. Uh, I, I see a lot of new faces. I, I haven't seen a few old friends, but uh, you will soon learn that I have a sort of bizarre sense of humor. So, you know, just stay with me. Uh, okay, bef before we get into those three rules, which I spoke of, uh, Miguel... How are you? How are you doing? Good to see you. Do you have a microphone? Miguel? Hello. Uh, Hello. Uh, there we go. Hi, Miguel. Uh, Hi. We are doing pronunciation, pronunciation today, so the reason I'm testing everybody's microphone is I'm probably going to ask you. You know, uh, stay focused because I'm probably going to go student to student and student and maybe have you practice some words, perhaps practice the word and use it in a sentence, okay? Because we're checking pronunciation of S sounds, all right? I'm going to do a little screen share with you and talk about our three rules of S pronunciation. Uh, hang on a second so I get that screen share up. Okay, here we go. Okay, uh, again, there's many reasons we add an S at the end of words, but it doesn't matter. There are three different pronunciations or sounds. One is the Z sound, like a B. Zzz. One is the S sound, like a snake. Zzz. Or air coming out of a balloon. And... And one sound, we actually add a vowel. Uh, we actually say, like, is. Like the short verb to be word is. We, so we will actually add another vowel sound. All right, let's look at the rules. If these seem a little complicated at first, I will do my best to explain them, and we will look at examples. Okay. Regular set. Okay, now it says when a noun ends... You know what? I should have edited that myself. It doesn't matter. Uh, like I demonstrated at the beginning of the class, it makes no difference if it's a noun or a verb where we're looking at a third person. Uh, these rules, again, they work for any grammatical ending. Possessive, it doesn't matter. Um, when a noun ends with a vowel, any vowel sounds, or a voiced consonant, with the exception of z and j, and we'll get, I'll explain that a little more further. Um, for those of you who may not know, okay, hang on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain a little bit about voiced and voiceless, what that means, because it's important, important for you to all understand, because it actually helps us with many pronunciation. Um, problems. Past tense verbs, S, today we're looking at. Okay. In the English language, consonants, many consonants have a voiceless form and a voiced form. For example, F. If I pronounce F, my top teeth on my bottom lip, and I just breathe, right? Fun. Okay. However, if I make the same mechanical motions, my teeth, top teeth, bottom lip, same, exactly the same, but I'm using my voice box, I make a V sound. And if you actually hold your throat, um, you can feel the vibration in your throat when you make a voice sound. 
you can actually feel it. If you hold your throat and you do FV, you can feel your voice vibrating. Now, uh, there are three kinds of consonants, voiced, like V, unvoiced, like F, and then there are also what are called movement consonants, for example, R, where your tongue is moving. There, the movement causes the sound. Or W, think of a W. You have to open your lips. Wow. Wow. Okay, there's got to be movement to make the sound. All movement sounds, R, W, Y, uh, are voiced. If I do the W sound, there's there's vibration. All movement sounds are are called voice sounds and any of the other sounds that we make where we have vibration uh, are voiced. Okay, all vowels, vowels are simple because every vowel is voiced. It has to be. You use your uh, voice box or vocal cords to vibrate for any vowel sound you make which is why babies learn vowel sounds first. If, if anybody, anybody here have any children? Any, do I have any students today who have children? Yeah. Yeah? Marie, you have children? Yes. How, how old are your children? They must be young because you look very young. No. <laughs> uh, for, <laughs> for 14. 14? Okay. Well, you might have to remember back when they were infants. Infants, small children, babies. I, I have a one-and-a-half-year-old and a, a two-month-old, so I know. Trust me. Wah! Even when they cry, it's a voice sound. The first sounds we learn to make are actually voiced because we don't know how to move our mouth to do things like F or S because we're infants. We, we don't know that. So you can also, there's a couple of ways to think about it. Who, who else has children? Somebody else started to speak. Was it, was it you, Miguel? No? No, okay. I don't have children. Okay. All right, all right. Um, okay, so let's go back to the screen share here and talk about this again and maybe practice a few. A noun ends with a vowel or a voiced consonant. All right, so for example, bed becomes beds, right, with a Z sound. Stove, my example with a V, stoves. Notice a common mistake, the most common mistake second language users make is they add vowel sounds where they don't belong. So I'm going straight from the D sound to the Z sound in beds. Straight from the V to the Z, stoves, dog, dogs, okay? All right, room, rooms, okay? M is a, mm, is a nasal, but it's a voice sound, rooms. Now, they don't give any examples here of, uh, let, let me give you a couple other examples, all right? And... And I'll, I'm going to type some examples in the text box, and then I'll call on people to give me the, uh, what is, what is the plural pronunciation? Come on. Oh, my text box is dead. Oh, there we go. What is plural pronunciation of baby? Alderson, do you have a mic? No. Shaba, how about you? Baby. Babies. Babies, yeah. Okay, baby, words with a Y have a vowel sound at the end. Um, unfortunately, Eric doesn't have a mic. Gilang, what is the plural? How would I pronounce this sentence that I typed? Well, phrase actually that I typed in the text box. Long pen. Your long long pen. Pen. Very good with a Z sound. All right, that's a possessive, but your name 
has a voiced ending. Go along. Right? Um, okay, Marie. Yes. How, how would I pronounce the plural of hair? Hairs. Hairs. That's kind of almost a trick because hair can be countable or uncountable. Sometimes we can use plural with hair and sometimes we cannot. Since we're looking at plurals a lot today, I am kind of introducing this idea. Hair can be uncountable, for example, or countable. For example, I found two hairs in my soup, then I can use the countable with a plural. Oh. Right? But if I'm going to cut my hair, I never am going to say, I'm going to cut my hairs. Right? Do you guys get that? So sometimes when we're looking at plurals, they can be a little tricky. Moro, are you there? I'm here, teacher. All right. Okay, you try. How about it? it's your pen now? Moro's pen? Moro's pen. Moro's Z, Z sound, Moro's pen. Okay, all of you guys okay. are very good. Michael, are you there? No, he vanished. <laughs> Maybe he got nervous. Okay. Uh, Miguel, are you there? Yes. Um, okay. What is the plural of word? Word. One more time? Word. Words. Okay, sometimes it's a little difficult because we have many consonant sounds in a row, so we have to be extra careful. Many speakers, by the way, another common problem is they're very worried about pronouncing the first sounds. In actuality, in English, the last sounds are more important because they will carry grammatical meaning. They will change the entire meaning of our sentence or what we're trying to say. Um, hi, Nyan. Yes? How are you today? Yeah, I'm fine. How you always, I'm I'm very well. I'm doing very well. As always, yes. it's very good to see you. Um, yes. can 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 you read what I just wrote in the text box? Non spen. Non spen. For perfect. Very good. Okay, so that's the Z sound. Very good. Connecting the Z sound. You're all very wonderful. All right, let's move on to the next rule. Okay, hang on. Let me. Uh, whoops. Let me separate this a little bit. Okay. When a noun. All right, can you see that? Okay. When a noun ends with a voiceless consonant, then we pronounce it with an S. Okay, there's a couple exceptions, and one of them actually is S. Uh, F? No, that's. No, that's not true. Mm. Voiceless consonants end with S. For example, clock, clocks. Cat, cats. Roof, roofs. Some people actually say roofs, by the way. Because some of our... We'll get into that later, where the actual consonant sound will change. It's actually either is considered correct. All right, so these sounds have an, an S. Now, sometimes, sometimes in English, like uh, some word, whoever did words, sometimes we have complicated clusters of sounds. So, for example, if I use the word that I just typed, asks, asks, sometimes we really shorten the middle sound, ask words, even words, the middle sound R D Z gets shortened so ass you barely hear the K. 
So if you're concerned about pronunciation, the most important part is to get the last sound because it it shows uh, some meaning. It, uh, you know, it shows the plural, so it has meaning that we need to express. Um, okay, and now another one here, months, months. Again, here's another good example where we reduce pronunciation of the TH, actually. A native speaker doesn't really say months. We don't draw it out and express every sound. We, we shorten it and say months really fast. The TH sound actually sounds more like a T, months, two months, one month. Okay, one month, you strongly hear the TH, two months, you, you barely hear it. This is common. Okay, but notice again, the S sound is closely joined, no extra vowel sound. So let's, let's whip around one more time. <clears throat> we can do this quickly. All right, I'm going to type in a text word. Adelson, are you with me? Um, let's, okay. What is plural of, actually, instead of me taking the time to type them, why don't we just, I'll say a word and you say the plural, okay? Adelson, do you, ha you have a microphone, right? Adelson, do you have a microphone? Okay. Well, I don't think he does, so we'll go to Shaba. Uh, give, just give me the plural. Cut. Cut. Very good. Cut. Uh, okay. Dan. Hi, Dan. How are you? I haven't said hi to you yet. Hi. I'm fine, thank you. And you? Very well. I'm doing very well. Thanks. Nice picture. You look angry, though. Um, I'm referring to your Google picture. Uh, okay, Dan, we're just you're just gonna get it quickly. Give me the the call. Whoops, I scared him off. Okay, I was only kidding. Again, I have a weird sense of humor. Get along. Uh, Glong, ready? Yes. Okay, your word is laugh. Laugh. Ha, 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 ha. Give me the plural with an S. Go on. Yeah, I'm just trying to get yeah. you to... Sure. The, the word I just... Laugh. One more time. Laugh. Okay. With the S. One more time. Laughs. Laughs. Okay, I heard it that time. Maybe it's your microphone, I'm not sure. Laughs. Yes, it's an S sound. Uh, Koji, I haven't seen you yet. Hi, Koji. Koji, okay. Wow, people are jumping in and out of this class. Is anyone having problems staying in the Hangout? Anybody having technical problems? I don't think so. Okay. Yes, I have. Yeah, I noticed, Dan, you, you disappeared on me there. Um, okay, just uh, real simple. Lucas, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. All right. Real simple. I'll give you a word. You give me the plural. Walk. Okay. Walks. That's it. S sound. Very good. Simple. Um. Okay, uh, uh, Marie, uh, let's see, yeah. uh, a bet, I'll give you a weird word, here I'll type it for you, a bet, a bet, a bet, with an S, thank you, do you know that word, a, to a bet, it's a no. verb, to a Aid and abet. If you abet someone, you help them or assist them. Okay. Like aiding and abetting. You're helping and aiding. Okay. Moro. Okay. okay. Let's, hi. All right. 
Okay, uh, let's see. I'm running out of words. There's not that many voiceless words. Uh, okay, I'll give you a, a, an interesting one. How about bath? Baths? Yeah, that's a hard one, right? Bath, baths, baths. So, actually, because it's a little more difficult, it's important to pronounce the S, less important to fully pronounce the TH, so it has a slightly reduced pronunciation. Bath. Bath. Okay, that's pretty good. That's very good, actually. Nice. Okay. Okay, and very good. Um, all right. Jan? Yes? Hi. I'm like uh, out of girl. words. My brain's not working anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Okay. Okay, I, I don't know. I'm running out of words. Um, okay, well, let's say nut. 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 It's a nut. Okay, uh, plural. Oh, yes. Nuts. Uh, okay. Nuts. One more time. Be careful not to in nuts. 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 Oh. Nuts. Uh, I should be able to hear the T sound a little more. Nuts. I should be heard. The, in other words, what I'm what I'm missing on is the aspiration. Uh, okay, I'm missing the T sound. The t, nuts, nuts. T, t. So when I say the T and then an S, I'm really going to hit the T hard. Nuts. Try it one more time. Nuts. Nuts. Okay. All right. Okay, let's uh, move on. We'll look at the, our last rule here. Hang on. Oh, just give me a second. Okay. All right, last rule here. All right. When a noun ends with a consonant, okay, now this may look more difficult than it is. Uh, these are the sounds S. Uh, we've got the ch sound, C sound, ch, uh, X sound. I might write this X, Z, S, S, H sound. Sh. Okay, these are the weird things you're looking at. This is not an F. It is actually an SH sound. This is what are called phonetic. So don't accuse you. Let me explain the third rule a little easier. Okay, there's something we call sibilants. Okay, sibilants, these are the sounds. Okay, the sibilants are S. These are sounds that uh, kind of sound like a snake. S, uh, Z, Z sound. S, H, like sh. Uh, C-H, like ch, the sort of air kind of sounds, <coughs> all right, when we have an X at the end of the word, X, uh, obviously it makes an S sound anyway, and then the J sound, um, like the sound in judge. J. These were, these sounds, okay, that you see here, well, you will in a second, S, Z, S, Sh. If you listen to me make all those sounds, they're all sounds. They're all, these are called sibilants, and they all think about it, sibilants, snakes, slippery, slimy, snake sibilants. They're all those kinds of sounds. Those are called sibilants. So any words that end with a sibilant, that is where we finally add an, a vowel sound and we pronounce it like is. All right, let's look at some examples. Okay, for example, gas becomes gases. Ooh, that's misspelled. 
we often we will add an S to that too. Actually, gases. Okay, glass becomes glasses. What we're doing is we're adding a syllo one syllable as well. Gas, one vowel sound, one beat, or one syllable. When I make it plural, gases becomes two syllables. Glass, glasses. Nose, noses. Okay, Z sound, nose, noses. Brush, brushes. Watch, watches. I think you get the idea. Um, uh, box, boxes. Okay, so any of these sibilants add a sound. So let's just let's see if we can whip around and try these. Saba, wash, washes. Good it, Dan. Um, uh, hex, hexes, hexes. Yeah, that's a kind of a weird word, but hexes, like a magical curse, is a hex. Um, get along. Uh, judge. Judges. Okay. Very good. Hamdi, how are you? New face. Hi, hello. Hi. Uh, where are you from, Hamdi? From Egypt. Egypt. Okay, well, welcome to the class. We're just uh, I'm you. throwing out some words and we're practicing uh, pronunciation with the plural or the S ending. Uh, okay, so let's see. I've got to give you a word. Um, change. Change. Okay, changes. Changes. That's it. You can add a vowel sound. Koji, are you there yet? No, Lucas? Sorry? Yeah, I am here. Lucas is here, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah I don't think um, Koji has a microphone. I'm not sure. All right, Lucas. Uh, fish. Fishes. Fishes. Okay, very good. Um, Marie, news. Uh, ah. <laughs> new, newsy, newsy. No, I'm torturing you, Marie. I don't know why I've picked you to torture today. <laughs> new. I'm evil. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, okay. News, news, news. News is news, news, yeah. There is no news is because news is uncountable. We can't count it, so we can't make it plural. Okay. All right. So uh, also, I, I, don't, I don't know why it came into my head. Just I don't know why I'm torturing you. I'm sorry. But we can say some news. Have you heard any news? Um, I can say a piece of news, but I cannot say a news and news. Two news is four news is. I cannot say it. So there's there actually there's no answer there. It's just news. And it keeps its however you notice it, it keeps its Z type ending. Alright. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. Um sorry. <laughs> Alright, Moro, uh let's see. Uh let's see, what can I give you? Uh, bus. Uh, can you uh, write it? I certainly can. <laughs> bus. Uh, ah, bus. Uh, buses. Buses. Okay. Uh, Nyan. Success. S okay. Uh, success. Okay. Give me the full is. Su one more try. S Successy. Successes. Yes. Okay. Well, one more try. Successes. I should hear is. Successy. Is. Successes. The ah, there you go. That was it. That was it. Good one. The last one was good. All right. Nice. Okay. All right. Now. Look, we're going to look at a couple rules and maybe kind of quickly so we can do more practice. These are 
the rules I just gave you, okay, again, to review, v keeping it simple, vowels and voiced Z pronunciation, okay? Voiceless S pronunciation, sibilance, never mind all this garbage, just think of sibilance, <laughs> sounds, is ending. Add a syllable. These next things we're going to look at are basically spelling techniques. When we have um, nouns, in particular, we're looking at nouns um, where we have a consonant and Y, for example, we'll change the spelling. All right, so baby becomes babies with I E instead of with a Y. All right, day becomes days. A vowel and Y, same, same. We don't change it to I E. This is a spelling rule. It doesn't change pronunciation, though. If you think about it, baby ends with a vowel sound, so the pronunciation is still a Z sound. Babies, fly, I, vowel sound, flies. Okay? So none of these next rules I'm showing you changes anything about those hard and fast, absolutely always pronunciation rules. We're just briefly going to look at spelling. I'm going to run through this uh, kind of quickly. Okay, and then we'll do some practice. A vowel in Y, uh, just it, spelling, just an S. We can simply add an S. So key, keys, boy, boys. Notice the Z sound is still at the end. Guy, guys. It's still a Z sound pronunciation of the final S. Um, fry, the fries, proper names, still the same. Proper name, Kennedy, the Kennedys. Okay. Still the rules are the same. Now, some other, some kind of strange rules that you should be aware of are with nouns that some, most nouns that end with F. Um, the spelling actually changed. It doesn't change the rule, though. If you can see, loaf, like a loaf of bread, becomes loaves. The F changes to V. Okay? However, that does not change the pronunciation rule because with the V, as we know, it's a voiced sound and it has Z pronunciation. So loaf becomes loaves. We don't say loafs. Although, okay, I, hopefully I, I don't want this to confuse you. All right, as a noun, okay, loaf can become loaves, and the pronunciation would change loaves. Oh, okay, Koji's here for real. All right, good, Koji. When we're we're gonna Hello, do a practice. You know? Yes, I can, and it's so good to hear from you. How are you? Okay. Thank you. I'm fine. Thank you. I'm sorry because uh, my microphone was turned off. Uh, okay. No problem. No big deal. Okay. Okay. Now this is a weird kind of a weird thing. All right. As a noun, loaf becomes loaf, loaves, and the pronunciation of the s follows the same rule: uh, a voiced sound v followed by a z pronunciation. Now, but wait a second here. Um, loaf can also be a verb, um, and the does anybody know the meaning of the verb? And if it's a verb, the spelling is not going to change, so the pronunciation now follows the pronunciation of an F, <laughs> or a voiceless sound, so it's loafs. Does anybody know that verb? Many of you probably know a loaf of bread, but do you know loaf the verb? I, I did nothing on Saturday whatsoever. I loafed around the house all day. The teacher loafs around the house. It means to be very, very lazy. Do nothing. Okay, you loaf around, you're very lazy, and you don't do anything. Um, uh, in the screen share, you're also going to see an, another one. It's the same thing. With wolf, 
becomes wolves as a as a noun, but as a verb, it becomes it's it doesn't change spelling. So now that the pronunciation of of the verb for third person subject verb agreement is wolfs. Does anybody know the what the verb wolf to wolf means? You wolf something. Can anybody guess? Can it, can anyone guess what to wolf something means? Maybe? No. Wolf animal. Wolf is an animal oh. as a, oh. an, uh, <laughs> Well, that's a howl. <laughs> You're <laughs> a weird animal. A weird animal. <laughs> you know, a werewolf. Okay. No, but the verb, it can be a verb. You're talking about the noun, the sort of the big dog-like animal is a wolf. Oh, 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 oh. Yes. That's howling. If I, if I use it as a verb... Uh, I only had five minutes to eat, so I had to wolf my food. Eat very fast. You, you wolf your food when you eat like a wolf, like a, a dog, like they eat very fast, right? Before, maybe, could be. Yeah, okay, well, we can use it as a verb, but if I use um, the teacher wolfs his food, the teacher eats very fast. That's what that means. Okay? Then, the because it's the verb, and, and it, the word ends with an F sound, no vibration, it's voiceless, so I have to pronounce the S as an S, wolfs, not Z, wolfs. There were, but if I use the noun, there are two wolves in the forest. You see what I'm trying to show you here is that we have to be careful if we're using the word as a noun or a verb because it can definitely change pronunciation for us. Um, okay, it's hoof, hooves. Some nouns, like I, I mentioned roof. Sometimes you can, you can say roofs, hoof. You can say hoofs or hooves. Either one is okay. What's a hoof? Anybody know the meaning of a hoof? Uh, oh, oh I, I got to do an animal class, obviously. <laughs> uh, a hoof is the foot of a horse, or a camel, oh. or cow. Yeah, any hoofed animal. They have a hard part on the bottom of their foot. That's called a hoof. They don't have toes like you and you and I might have. They have hoofs or hooves. You can actually say either. Scarf, scarves, wharf, wharves. Okay, that's not important. And there are a few nouns which actually change vowels. We don't add an S. Okay, these last ones to look at. There are some words where we don't actually add an S. For example, mouse becomes mice. One mouse, two mice. Here's one that many second language speakers mess up. Um, one woman, two women. We never say women's. Very, very common second language speaker mistake. But very much wrong. Two women. Goose and geese. Man and men. One man, two men. One tooth, two teeth. Okay, so the last parts are just really spelling rules. Um, okay, so because I can probably do this faster, let's see if I just, uh, or maybe not. Okay, hang on a second. I'm going to, we're just going to do a, an exercise here. I'm just, we're going to go around. I'm going to give you a word. I might give you a... Uh, I might give you, I'll write the plural form, okay? It might be, I might use a possessive, I might use a pronoun contraction, I might use a noun, I might use a verb. I want you to try to 
concentrate on two things using the word in a simple sentence it can be very simple all right as simple as you want to be as you want to make your sentence and then uh, also make sure that you're correctly pronouncing the plural form okay so uh, I, I keep making Saba go first well he's good he can handle it Saba okay can okay can cans cans with a Z all right and in a sentence I can swim <laughs> that was interesting. Okay. Okay. Can. All right. Now, I can. Now, that's a verb, right? Cans would be the noun, the thing that you're, you're maybe you have a can of beans or you have a can oh. of Coca Cola, right? But. <laughs> You know, what you, it's okay. What you did was very interesting, and it actually allows me to make another point. Actually, it sounded like he was saying cans together because he was joining the words together. I can swim. So he was correctly, closely joining words together, which we should do in English. But not exactly the exercise. Okay, but that I was trying to do but actually we have to be careful again is it the verb or is it the noun actually a little bit what I very related to what I was just talking about so okay try it cans like cans of coke I uh, You know, you know, cans the a uh, can the noun, right? Mm -hmm. I... No, so I'm going to throw it to Dan. Uh. <laughs> I'll, c I'll come Sorry. back to you, Saba. It's okay, Dan. What do you think? And I have two cans. Can you use cans in a sentence? I have cans. I have cans? Oh, okay. Yeah, I well, have all right. Two That's, cans. I have two cans. Good. Giving me the number is good. Gilong, I'm going to give you another word. Gilong, are you there? Yes. Okay, use this word in a sentence. Um, Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Maybe just your microphone. W w can you tell me again? Uh, uh, can you uh, hey, no, I can't hear you very well. Your microphone's sort of giving me the robot voice. Wow, 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 wow. Oh, sorry, sorry, I'm not sure. I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can. You know, it's not your fault. You know, technology. I know how it is. Believe me. I have a battle going on with Google all the time. Uh, Fasal, are you there? He just came in. All right. Goodness. All right. Oh, oh, oh. Go on. Okay. Koji, can you try the second word? Jumps. Yes, in a sentence. In a sentence. Uh, I. Mm, I take some jumps off, out of the sofa, playing with my daughter. <laughs> Is that correct? I take <laughs> jumps. some jumps. Uh, well, you probably would not say it that way, to be honest. I okay. think I think to, I think your grammar technically is correct. It's just an unnatural way to say it. 
Okay. You, you, you would normally say, I jump on the sofa with my daughter to show it. That's continue. what I imagine, but I need to use that that word, the uh, weird word. Right, <laughs> right, right, because of the S. All right, so let me show you something. Okay, this okay. is why we learn English. It's, it's okay. When we make sure. mistakes, the whole class learns. He jumps on the couch. Okay? okay. Now... I'm using third person, I'm talking about someone else, not myself. When I talk about myself, that's first person. When I talk about someone else, but singular, he jumps, or if, you know, if I, I can say, Koji jumps on the couch. But, if I use plural, uh, they, I have, to, I have to say, they jump on the couch. If I say Koji and his daughter, there's two of you, Koji and his daughter jump on the couch. So I can't use the plural jump. Right? So only like he, she, or it jumps. All right? Can you dig right. it? Uh, okay. Right? Okay, good. Well, that's good. We all learned something there, I hope. Lucas. Yes. How you doing? Uh, let I'm me see. Fine. <laughs> Let me see if I can get fetch you a word here. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's try this. Let me see if I can get, fetch you a word here. Uh, Foxes. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what that means. Ah, fox. Oh, how do you explain fox? Um, a f a fox is another dog-like animal. It's small, often red or gray. Okay. 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 I know. Okay. Foxes. Uh, I was so a lot foxes. I saw a lot of foxes. Okay. Yeah. I saw a lot of foxes. Okay. Yeah, that works. I saw a lot of foxes. Yeah, that's fine. Also, foxes can be slang. Does anybody know the slang? No. Foxes. I... The street language. Well, yeah, a little bit slang, but but it's so extremely common. You, you should know this, really. Um, I could, if I say I saw two foxes on the beach, I'm not talking about little dogs. Okay, I'm talking about two gorgeous women, two beautiful women. All right, some foxes. Actually, guys sometimes call men fox. Ooh, who's that fox? The men, actually, it can be guys or women, actually, to be honest. Marie, hello. Yeah. Yeah, let's see. What's your word? Um, what can I come up with here? Uh, let's see. Okay, now I want to give you... I'll give you an easy one. Oh, uh, no, we already did a P. Hang on. Okay, here's your, here's your word. Wall, okay. Are you there? Can you use it in a sentence? Suddenly it's very quiet. Uh, no. <laughs> okay, walls. There you go. Good. Good pronunciation. Z pronunciation. L is a voice sound. Walls. Good. Walls. In a sentence. The walls. Uh, Berlin walls uh, are failed in 19, 1989. Ah. Okay, the Berlin Walls fell in 1989. Hmm. We usually refer to that... Uh, okay, actually... All right, let's look at that. All right, we've only got one minute, but last important port here. Okay, I can never do this. All you kids out there... I can never put the and then a plural noun. The we we use um, we use a 
an and the to mean one of something. So I will n I can never use a plural. All right. I would have to say the Berlin Wall fell down. Oh my gosh. All right. Just when we're starting to gather momentum with the class, I felt like we're actually learning some stuff. I am terribly sorry, but I have to end the class because it's time. So, so it's not, uh, right well, my example was not right. Or no, because I can't say the walls. Well, I can. The collective, the walls are closing in. I can say the walls if I'm talking about the group. But the what Berlin is Wall is pr pretty much known as one thing. Okay, hang on. You know what, guys? I will stay in the Hangout, but I have to end the broadcast. So for all you watching the broadcast, watching the recording, thank you very much. For you viewing outside, 